Hello everyone, I'm Dondi Richardson with Flora Craft. And today we're gonna to show you a couple, one of our new containers, um, our uh, Aquatainer, comes in two sizes. This is the long one, the two brick. It's the one we're gonna be using as our centerpiece today. And I don't have a new project to show you, but I do have the one that I did last week. It's not in the greatest shape, but I wanna show you what it does in a week. So it does last quite a long time. Now, some of the little tulips have been pulled out completely. I've pulled out a lot of them that were spent, but um, I also wanted to show you when I arranged this last Wednesday, this flower was a little bit lower than this green. So it grew four inches in a week. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the arrangement. If you want it, it to last and look nice, you might wanna start with your flowers a little lower because they are gonna to continue to grow. So I just wanted you to see that. All right, and we are gonna use, I'm gonna reuse my little bunnies today. And I wanna show you how to create the bunnies first. So to do our bunnies, you're gonna need our 12 by 18 by one inch craft foam sheet. This is our, our white craft foam sheet. Um, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock and the cardstock works better as a template because when you pin it to the foam, you'll have that um, rigid edge to run your uh, clean cut cutter around and it just gives you a nice clean edge. So you'll need poster board or cardstock. You're gonna need some small sequin pins to pin the template to the foam. You will need for, for mine, I used um, just a paper covered wire, um, but you could use, they have um, cloth covered, white cloth covered wire at Michael's, or um, you could even use, I found just some white twine that would make cute little whiskers. So whatever you have to make whiskers, this is a little half inch pom pom. And I didn't find any half inch pom poms in store. Um, I do believe they have some online, but shopping in store, a good substitute would be just a pink chenille stem and just roll it up into a, roll it up into a ball. And that could be your cute little nose. Uh, the little eyes, I just used little black beads. Um, you could use little beads. You could use, again, a little black piece of chenille stem. Um, maybe some puffy paint would even work for eyes. So anything will, will make the little eyes for you. For his little tail, I just used a two inch pom-pom. You could make your own pom-pom out of yarn, um, whatever you wanna use for a tail. Cotton ball, even just a regular cotton ball out of your <laughs> bathroom cabinet. Um, you'll need a pen to, or a pencil to, to trace your template onto the paper. You're going to need some brown paint. Doesn't have to be brown. Um, your little bunnies could be pastel. They could be, uh, some color to match your flowers. Um, they could be polka dotted. They could be, you could decoupage napkins on them. You could decoupage fabric on them. You could wrap them with twine, you can, I mean, there's so many things you can, you can cover our foam with. Just some ideas for you. Uh, to apply the, the paint um, on our foam, I found the best brush to be a flat brush. It just pushes the paint a little better into the cells of the foam. What else are we gonna need? We are gonna need, we'll need a wet foam brick. Gonna need a wet foam brick today. This is a wet foam brick that absorbs water. Um, we also have other bricks at Michael's 
we have our dry foam brick. We have our flora foam brick. Flora foam brick is uh, very dense, um, more sturdy, would be used for larger stems or um, permanent stems, silk stems. Uh, for our dry foam, if you wanted to do this in dry foam, you could use this, this brick for um, dried florals or preserved flowers that are have the more fragile stems will we'll insert nicely into our dry foam. So you could use silk or dry in this arrangement just as easy. But today we're using wet foam. You will need also with your wet foam, you're gonna want something to cut it on, some kind of little tray because it is gonna make a little bit of a mess when you, when you cut it. You might want a towel to clean up any mess that you might make. And you're also gonna need about a gallon of water. So this is just a, um, sh like a shoe, tote, shoe storage. And it just happens to fit our brick real nice. And it um, fits about a gallon of water. Now, when you get your, I'm gonna start the brick soaking so that we can, it can start soaking while I'm showing you how to cut out the bunny. So this is warm water. It's gonna be like bath water. The warm water is best because when you get your flowers, you're gonna see they all come with a little packet of flower food. And the packet of flower food is gonna do about a quart of water. So you're gonna want a couple of these in your water. So the reason I use warm water is one, it's gonna dissolve this flower food a lot better so it'll get completely dissolved. So this one's kind of soggy. I'll just rinse it out a little. It's gonna help dissolve that flower food in your water so that there are no particles left on the bottom. You want it fully dissolved. And two, uh, flowers uptake water easier with warm water than they do cold water. So you're gonna give them a nice healthy drink. So when you bring your flowers home from the store, if you're gonna use them right away, you can put them right in this warm flower food water. Before you put them in here, you're gonna to wanna to cut about a half an inch off the bottom of the stem and you're gonna to wanna to cut it at a 45 degree angle. That 45 degree angle is gonna allow the flower to uptake more water more easily. If you're not gonna use your flowers right away, then you wanna keep them in a cool, dark place until you're ready to use them. When you get them out, <clears throat> just go through them. Make sure there's no dead or dying blossoms or leaves. You wanna pull those all off right away because any, any dead or dying uh, plant material, it gives off ethylene gas, which will kill the healthy flowers faster. So you wanna get rid of all that. You want your container to be clean, very clean, so there's no bacteria. You want all your tools that you're using to be clean. Um, you can clean them just by using just a diluted uh, bleach water will we'll work fine. You just wanna make sure everything's clean to start so that there's no bacteria that, are, that are, your flowers are gonna drink up. So in our wet foam brick, we like to soak it, it's called float soak. Float soak because that's exactly what it is. You lay it on top of the water and you let it float until it's completely soaked. So what this is doing is it's pushing the water in from the bottom of the brick and it's pushing all the air out the top of the brick so that you're sure that it's 
totally, totally soaked. If I was to take it and put it in the water and just push it down into the water and pull it up, the outside of the brick's going to look like it's soaked, but there's going to be air that didn't, that gets trapped inside the brick. If there's air trapped inside the brick, that means there's no water inside the brick, which means your stems won't be able to drink. So you'll know that it's fully soaked. It's gonna, it's going to um, sink so that it's just at the surface of the water when it's fully soaked. It'll be all the same color and you won't see any bubbles coming up the top. So I'm gonna say that this one's fully soaked. So I'm gonna leave that there just for a second while I show you, get this mess out of the way. Not mess, it's not mess. It's actually clean because I'm using the clean cut cutter. So this is a heated tool. It turns, the collar turns, so you twist the collar to on. So it's just twist on and off. You're gonna let it heat up. It takes about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so to heat up. And it does get very, very hot like hot enough to give you a blister. So do not touch the blade. You're gonna to wanna to cut this in a well ventilated area. Put on a fan, open a window, whatever. Just, just need some air. Um, it's gonna smoke a little bit while you're using it. It's, it's what it does, it's, it's, it's a heat cut tool. So, um, what you're going to want to do is hold your tool at a 90 degree angle to the foam and you'll just run your blade along the edge of that template and you're not going to push don't try to force the blade through the foam you're just going to let it melt through the foam keep that blade straight with the foam that 90 degree angle and it's not the tool's not made for speed the tool's made for intricate cuts. So you can see I can go right down into the, to the corner of those ears and come right back out. It cuts in any angle, in any direction. And it gives a nice clean edge. So when I'm done cutting this, I won't have to worry about any rough edges. And if you do have a rough edge, I'll show you how to remedy that. So that's how easy it is to use. Again, no mess, super smooth, clean edge, like finished factory edge. You wanna remember to shut this off and it's gonna stay hot for a little bit. So it does come with a stand. So just put it back on its little stand and let it cool after you shut it off. When you're, another thing is when you're putting your sequin pins in, you don't need a lot. Like I just use six pins on this bunny, but you want to make sure they go straight down into the foam. You don't want them pointing out towards the edge because then they'll cut on your blade. You'll catch on your blade as you're cutting. So just make sure that all your pins are straight into the foam or even a little bit inward so that they're not coming out over the edge of your foam. That's that. Comes out just perfectly. So if you do have, like right here, I stopped a little short and made a little bump. Just take a piece of your foam and use it like a sanding block. And it'll make that edge nice and smooth. So it just takes it right off just that little bit. And also keep your little scraps because you can use it. To dry your bunny. when you're done painting. So keep your little scraps too. And then just real quick about painting. What I like to do when I paint this down so I don't get my station dirty. Our foam does, does like paint. <laughs> um, one thing you can do to um, seal the 
the foam before you paint it is you could use Mod Podge or you could use like Elmer's glue and just brush that all over the foam, let it dry completely and then paint it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna seal all those little holes up and then you won't have to use as much actual paint, but you can use just paint also. So I like to just pour it right on the foam. And then the only thing that I like to say is just remember that these are all little open cells. So you're gonna want them, you're gonna wanna get in there from every direction. So wiggle your brush around, kind of push that paint into those cells and work it around with that brush. And the more that you get in those little cells, the better coverage you're gonna get. So I just like to push it in there, move your brush all in different directions. And you can see it fill in. You can see the little holes that you have to get. And a lot of times, like with this darker color, you might even need two coats, but it will, it will cover. Just have to remember, you have to get it from every direction. So I'm not gonna go too crazy about painting the bunnies, but that's what you're gonna wanna do. You wanna get the edges and both sides because this is a centerpiece. So you're gonna want both sides decorated. All right, any questions about the bunny? There are no questions about the bunny. Why? Why? Because I don't have anyone asking questions. Okay, so let us start with getting this brick into our container. I'm gonna take it right out of the water. You're gonna let it you know, let it soak from or drip from one corner. It's going to drip for about 10 seconds or so. And that's just all the excess water. It will stop dripping. And you're going to set it on a tray. Get rid of that water. <clears throat> and for this container, like I said earlier, this actually can fit two full bricks but they come out of the container pretty tall. So I would have had to have covered all this with greens and have my bunnies way up here. Because it's a centerpiece and I want it a little bit lower on the table, I'm gonna take this full brick and I'm gonna cut it in half. So for this, you can use just a straight edge. This is just a straight edge kitchen knife. Um, if you use a kitchen knife to cut wet foam, then Dedicate the knife to wet foam. Don't put it back in your kitchen. This is now your wet foam knife. Um, another thing that works real well is this is a artist uh, palette knife. And because it's so thin, it doesn't have a sharp blade, but because it's so thin, it cuts our wet foam really nice too. So that's an option if you have that. And then it doesn't have to go back in your kitchen. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut this right down the center as straight as I can. And you're using a straight edge knife because it's not going to tear the foam. It just makes a nice, smooth, straight cut in your foam. And I'll show you that. See how we've soaked it full and complete. No dry spots. And we're going to place this right in our container. And it's not going to fit. Um, oops, not that way, this way, sorry. <laughs> Wide side down, not narrow side down. So just like that. And that's going to give you that nice low profile. I'm not going to have to cover it with a bunch of greens. Now, to keep this in the container, you'll find what they call anchor tape or waterproof tape. And we're just gonna wanna put a couple pieces 
over the top of each brick. And what that's gonna do is once you get all the flowers in there, this is gonna be a little bit top heavy. So if you're moving it around to water it or moving it on and off the table, this anchor tape is gonna keep it inside the container. It's not gonna come flopping out of there on you and mess up your arrangement. So this is just a little added security. Make sure it stays put. And just these four pieces is plenty. Just strap it down tight and that keeps it in there nice for you. All right, for this arrangement, now, most times when you would start with this arrangement, <clears throat> a lot of times you're taught to what they say, green in the container first, which means you're gonna camouflage the container and you're gonna camouflage all the foam with greenery, say leather leaf or ruscus or whatever you're using. So you would camouflage the container and the foam first before you start putting your flowers in. Today, I'm gonna use tulips, which are soft stemmed flowers. So I like to, I like to start with my, I like to start with my flowers because I can see where I'm inserting them in and those soft stems don't have to try to break through greenery to get into the foam. So we're gonna start with the tulips today. And because the bunnies are the star of the show today, they're actually gonna be my focal flower. So I am gonna start with the bunnies right in the center of the arrangement. Now, because this is a centerpiece, you might want one of these bunnies to be looking at the other side of the table. So maybe you want one with his little tail to the back. Oof. All right. So today I have about 18 stems of tulips and I have three packages of ruscus. I'm gonna start with our tulips. <clears throat> All right, and again, any of these leaves that are not looking great, we just wanna get rid of them. Don't want any damaged or dying greens in our, in our arrangement. And then two, I do wanna show you real quick. So if you have a tulip that's a little, maybe we should go to front facing. Yeah, maybe front facing. There we go. So if you have a tulip that is a little bit wimpy, if you take, this is very thin wire. This is probably like a 26 gauge stem wire. So if you bend it at a 90 degree, degree angle at the top, I don't know if you guys can see that. So we're just bending a, and then take this little end and bend a little, bend a little wire loop. And then you're gonna take your little wire loop and you're gonna put it around the base of your tulip and just give it a tiny little squeeze just so it holds it. You don't wanna poke it through there because tulips grow <laughs> and if you poke it through there then you're it you might just um, tear it 
So then you just wanna easily get it behind that leaf and spiral it down the stem. My leaves are droopy. Spiral it down the stem. Cut off what you don't need. With some wire cup cutters. And see that stood that stem right up nice and straight. And you can even give it a little bend if you want and it'll kind of hold its shape. So that's how you wire a tulip. I'm gonna turn him around. I'll have everybody face you guys. All right, so I'm gonna start with my tallest tulip. And remember what I said, tulips grow. <laughs> so you wanna start a little lower than you would think. So if you hold your, move some of this out of the way. If you have your flower arrangement in front of you and you hold your flower alongside the table, you can gauge how tall you want your flower to be and then you'll know right where to cut it. And I'm gonna cut it about right there. You wanna cut it on an angle, that's gonna help that insert into the foam. And we're gonna put this first one right here next to this guy. And you're gonna want that into the foam about an inch and a half, two inches. You wanna get it in there nice and sturdy. And from there, I'm just gonna build. So this is a, we'll call this, you know, a lot of times when you do an arrangement, you want all your flowers to go into a center axis that, or a, like, a, like spokes on a wheel so that everything looks like it's going into the center. Well, we're doing, they call a vegetative arrangement which means that everything looks as if it's growing out of the ground. So it's okay to have everything paralleled, standing up, because this arrangement is supposed to look like they're growing, like they're in a little tulip field. So maybe there, and then you're just kind of playing. Um, you just want, this one has a little bow, so maybe we'll put him, maybe we'll put him back here, kind of peeking out the edge and just let him just curve out. A little shorter. Remember to cut them at an angle. Just helps them go into the foam a little better. And then because this is a centerpiece, remember you're gonna want some flowers to be viewed from back here. So if you have some that are kind of tipping back, you can let them kind of tip out the back of the arrangement want to make sure that all sides of the table have something pretty to look at. So we'll do a few back here. And I do have two colors of tulips today. Um, of course, anything's going to work with this arrangement. I mean, you could use daisies, you can use roses, you could use Daffodils, you could use, I mean, there's anything, anything will work in here. Any kind of spring little fun flower. But if you're using two colors, I would just go through and get the one color evenly spaced throughout the design. 
and then come back in with your second color and get that evenly spaced. That way you don't have a big mass of orange in one spot and then no yellow or, I mean, that's what I'm using today is yellow and orange. So we're gonna put a few of these poking out towards the front. Give a little interest out there. We'll get all these tulips in and then we'll come back in and fill in with all of our greens. So you just want different levels um, make sure they're viewed from every direction. Make sure you're getting them into the foam at least inch and a half. So they get in there and can drink well. And you want to give them, get them enough in there so that they have a little stability. And you want some low around the base and some a little taller. So we'll put in some of our yellow. What's nice about our containers too, now you can see there, there's a ton of yucky. So I wanna get rid of all that nasty looking dead stuff. So what's nice about our container is we made it this nice green color so it will blend really nice with with all of these greens, the greens and the flowers and the greens that I'm using. Um, so it really, that one was, that was just not gonna work. I tried to save it, but it just doesn't wanna be saved. I guess I don't have a whole lot of yellow. There's one good one. We'll put him here. So it's really easy to camouflage this container with just a few greens. And it's very lightweight. So I'm trying to bring, I don't have a lot of this yellow, so I'm just kind of trying to bring it throughout the arrangement as I can. So I'll put this one here back where I was gonna. And this one doesn't look real great. I'll put him back here. No, I won't. That's just too far gone. All right. So this is my greens I'm using today. Some of these I'm gonna leave a little taller and I'm gonna stand up with the tulips. And some of them I'm gonna cut, oops. I'm gonna cut apart and I'm gonna use them. So these little pieces, these little shorter pieces, so you just cut it right there at the little node and you're gonna use those to camouflage the edge of the container. So save if you cut, you know, you cut a little piece to use the length and then save those other pieces for around the edge. So I'll just cut little pieces and you're just gonna insert them right at the edge and then cut out this little extra piece. You just cut that out of the center. 
<laughs> as it goes flying. And you're just gonna use it to camouflage that edge. So we're cutting little pieces over by the bunnies. And then little sections to fill in the edge. So I'm cutting out that little center. And then probably an inch and a half down and right in there, cover that edge. And we're just gonna continue Adding in our greens. And I'm cutting these at a 45 degree angle also. Help insert them into the foam. And there's lots of filler out there that would work for this. And again, these are grocery store flowers. Um, you go to your local florist, you're gonna find a probably better selection. Um, they might have a little bit better selection of greens and just some fun textures. All right, so I'm gonna cut some of these to insert in front of these. Kind of perking up. Oh, my bunny's getting tired. Such a long day. <laughs> All right. You're just gonna continue filling in around that edge. You don't want any foam to show. Keep all your foam hidden and the edge of your container hidden. Some a little shorter. Tuck down inside. Try not to cover up your bunnies too much. And two, when you're working on this, just remember it's a centerpiece. So people are gonna be viewing it from down here, sitting down. So when you're doing it, just take a peek down low and make sure that you're covering all your foam. Cause up here, it looks full. When you peek around, you'll see that there's a lot of holes down low that when you're seated, you'll be able to see. So just keep in mind where you're gonna be using the arrangement because you don't want anybody looking at our foam, much as we would like it to show our product, we need to, we need to cover it up. And we're just continuing, just cutting this apart at their little, little leaf nodes, using them to fill in around these tulips. Try not to cover up the little bunny tails. You want those to stick out. Those are so stinking cute. So 
It's looking pretty good. Filling in. Take a peek out here. Like there's a couple spots by the bunnies here that need a little attention. Maybe one right there. Another one there, filling in. So I do want to show you, not going to get too crazy. I think you guys get the idea. Just making sure everything is covered. So once you feel good about it and you have most of your down low, um, I didn't finish back here, but most of your down low covered. I don't see any holes in there, maybe a little bit. So if you're using this kind of greenery, it doesn't drape real well, it does cover the edge of that container pretty good, but it doesn't drape down to cover the, the actual base of the container. So um, I don't mind it. I feel like it's camouflaged enough and it's the right color that you just really don't see it. But sitting down, you do a little, if, if you're using this particular greenery, you could cut it a little bit longer, you could make it work um, or you could just simply take a little bit of burlap and secure that around the base. And that would camouflage. Oh, well, you get what I mean, right? Anyway, you would gather it up and put it around the base and secure it as, um, and get, make the base more a decorative piece than just a base. So that could be kind of fun uh, with just burlap or maybe some decorative ribbon. You take some decorative ribbon, wrap that around the base and secure it. And that would give you a cute little a cute little decorative accent around the base of the pot. So either way, um, you can leave it as is. It camouflages nicely, or you can add a little ribbon or burlap to jazz it up. Um, with this arrangement, there's about a, you know, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch gap around the foam, which is a perfect place to be able to water it. You're going to want to water it every couple days. You're going to want to keep it well watered because tulips do like to drink. And I think, I think I've covered just about everything. So that's it, guys. Our Easter centerpiece. Thanks so much for joining us.